from the gridiron to the hardwood. James Mesh breaks it all down. It's time for another episode of Cleats and Sneaks. Well, boys, I think it's safe to say we can just cancel the 2024-2025 NFL season because we've already crowned a Super Bowl winner. Nah, <laughs> just, just playing. Welcome into another edition of Cleats and Sneaks. I'm your host, James Mesh, where we talk about everything big going on in the NFL, in the NBA. And what bigger right now than the trade that would just happen earlier Wednesday morning? That's right. Stephon Diggs, former Buffalo Bills wide receiver, one of the best wide receivers in the NFL has been traded to the Houston Texans. And you're wondering, what did it go for, James? Well, the Houston Texans only had to give up a second round pick, not in this upcoming draft, but in 2025. Not only do they get one of the premier receivers in the NFL, but they also got a fifth and a sixth round pick in the upcoming drafts as well. So pretty nice haul. And here's another thing. Not only have the Houston Texans gotten one of the best receivers in the NFL in Stephon Diggs after finding their quarterback of the future in C.J. Stroud and also having two really good wide receivers already in Nico Collins and in Tank Dell, both under the age of 25, so say as well. They also have a tight end who they just extended to a three-year deal in Dalton Schultz. He's an established veteran guy. And not only do they have Damian Pierce as one of the running backs in that room, but they also were able to trade a seventh round pick for one of the better running backs in Joe Mixon from Cincinnati. They are building one hell of an offense. Now, the only thing about this is, sure, these are a lot of names. These are a lot of really good names, and it's looking really good because not only did they get quite a few signings and deals done with guys on the offense side of the ball, but do not forget, that they made quite a few signings on the defensive side as well because the big one that they had got was former Minnesota Vikings edge rusher Daniil Hunter, former LSU Tiger. They also got quite a few veterans on the defensive line as well well, in Tim Settle, Mario Edwards, and Danico Autry. While in the secondary, they were able to help improve that as well because they have Derek Sailing Jr. as their number one right now, but they were able to get some bargain deals done with Jeff Okuda and... Mike Ford. They also were able to get linebacker Aziz Al Shahir, who was a former 49ers linebacker and was also coached by the current head coach for the Houston Texans. So a lot is going well for Houston. I'm sure the odds right now for sports books are skyrocketing, and Houston is probably, if not the highest or the most likely to win when it comes to the odds but is likely in the top three to five at this point because they have an absolute star-studded cast, not only on the offensive side, but on the defensive side. And they got some good special teams. They got a solid punter in Tommy Townsend earlier in the offseason, and they still have Kaimi Fairbairn at kicker. So a lot is going well. It's looking amazing on paper. The only thing about it, though, is we've seen Stefan Diggs Over the years, since he's come into the NFL, he's been quite a bit of a diva. He got out of Minnesota. He ended up getting his new regime. He got a new start in Buffalo. But then he ended up getting his way out of there as well and is now with Houston. Plus, we've seen plenty of times over the years, we've seen teams where they look great on paper. The teams win the offseason. But it doesn't necessarily translate to huge team success on the field. So even though it looks really good for the Texans, and you may be wanting to go to your favorite sports book right now and putting however much money you want to put on the Houston Texans to win the following Super Bowl, I'd probably pump the brakes on that because even though there's a lot going on, still need to see what actually happens because we've seen this plenty of times before where we have high expectations for teams after they make some crazy signings to make a couple of great deals but then it just fizzles throughout the season. And they may make the playoffs, but they don't go as far as maybe we had expected. Still a crazy deal nevertheless, but because of Houston pretty much going all in and having one of the quickest rebuilds that we have ever seen, crazy what hitting on the quarterback position can do for a team. But with the Buffalo Bills, 
this has been a big trend for them. Not only did they get rid of Stefan Diggs, at least they were able to get something out of it. Because the other departures that they had throughout the offseason are a telltale sign that they're basically punting for the next couple of seasons. At least right now. Because they've gotten rid of quite a couple of guys that were star-studded players for them that had big impacts over the last couple of years and for a majority of those players' careers. Remember Tredavious White. He was their number one corner for the Bills. They released him. Jordan Poyer was one of the best safeties in the NFL over the last couple of seasons. He got released. A couple of other guys on the defensive side as well. And they even got rid of center Mitch Morse. So a lot of big departures to finally bring down their cap space to below to where they're not over the cap before the season had started. Not necessarily how the Saints would do things, but still an interesting strat nevertheless. Maybe they're looking to get a little bit younger over these next couple of drafts and maybe try to rebuild over there. And even though over these next couple of seasons, it's not the most optimal because you look at Josh Allen, who's still in his mid-20s. He's really entering his prime right now. Even though you would be wasting a couple years at this point, it would probably help in the long run because if you can hit on this first round pick and the second round pick, Maybe get a couple of other guys in this draft that can be solid contributors and then be able to hit in 2025, maybe even in 2026. By the time we get into the mid-2020s, maybe Buffalo is right back into it before because as of right now, the AFC is absolutely stacked right now. We have, of course, the reigning Super Bowl champs, Kansas City Chiefs, two times in a row now. But you also have the Baltimore Ravens. You have the Cincinnati Bengals, who, once they get Joe Burrow back, they are looking to be one of the top teams as well. The Colts look like a rising team. Of course, the Houston Texans are up there as well. And then you have the Chargers, who have a winning coach in Jim Harbaugh to hopefully turn that team around. Plus, you have other teams that are trying to make it as well. I remember the Miami Dolphins. We expected a lot out of them. And then... You just have also, you're also wondering with the Jacksonville Jaguars, is Trevor Lawrence and that team finally able to turn that corner and figure it out? There's a lot of good teams in the AFC, and with an aging roster that the Buffalo Bills have, it's understandable. It's not the most optimal that you're having to go for this type of rebuild, but I can understand where they're coming from because how many times do you want to keep running it back with this group and only getting so far? I remember we saw this a lot where the Saints mortgaged their future to try and make a couple more runs with an aging Drew Brees, who was already past his prime. I know that you'll be wasting a couple years of prime for Josh Allen if you're the Buffalo Bills, and Bills fans are not going to be happy with that. But I think if you're looking for long-term success, basically punting, waiting a couple years, and then being able to retool and rebuild to put yourself back into contention, I think that's a solid idea. Not only that, but the only issue with that ideology is you're going to have to make sure that you absolutely hit on these picks over the next couple of years. And they have a good amount of picks. Don't get me wrong. The, the Buffalo Bills have quite a few picks over the next couple of years, but there's not as many as you would think that are premium priced. Because you look at this year. They have the 28th overall pick in the first round. Then they have the 60th overall pick in the second round, but then they don't have a third. They have a couple of the fourth ones. They have a couple of fourth round picks, but then they have some late round ones that are kind of just whatever. And most of the time, fifth and sixth rounders don't pan out. <coughs> now, of course, they have more picks in 2025 that are going to be solid and going to be in the first couple of days of the draft and aren't going to be day three picks. But if you're Buffalo and you're getting rid of all these guys that have been huge contributors for you over the last few years, you need to make sure that you hit on these. You have to make sure that you get some sneaky good deals that are good for a bargain. Make sure that you get guys on cheap deals where you're not having to overpay because it's not like you have a lot of cap space right now anyway. But Another thing that I had seen floating around, and we've seen a couple of wide receivers who aren't necessarily happy with, with their situation right now. Brandon Ayuk of the San Francisco 49ers. He, he and the 49ers organization, they have not been able to come close to getting a new deal done. And 
T. Higgins, he signed a franchise tag, but he requested to be traded early in the offseason as well. So there's a couple of candidates that the Bills can go get to help sure up that wide receiver room if they are not to draft a wide receiver with that first or second round pick, and they can get a couple of guys that are much younger and more established. The only thing is they would have to pay them a good bit because that's the whole thing about this is they're not able to come to a long-term situation. So if Buffalo is to do this, you have to make sure that they find the financials to get Josh Allen a new star wide receiver. We're just going to have to see. Hope you're enjoying this edition of Cleats and Sneaks. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our YouTube channel, ESPN Southwest Louisiana, and also turn on our notification bell. That way you get notified each time we upload any one of our podcasts or any one of our content. Because not only do we do podcasts with this one, but we also have the Four Tire Change podcast with Dawson Isolo. We have Over Par and the Miguez Mindset, both hosted by Matt Miguez. So we got plenty of content also for our local family of teams, of course, the LSU Tigers, the Houston Astros, the Louisiana Raging Cajuns, the McNeese Cowboys, the New Orleans Saints. We have plenty of teams that we cover here in this area that if you're interested in learning about or seeing, come check us out. We also have our ESPN Southwest Louisiana.com website and on Twitter slash X and on Facebook and on Instagram and TikTok. We have social media there as well. ESPN underscore SWL. Hey, before I let you go, I do want to look at another edition of my Meshes Mock Draft. This time, it'll be the 4.0 we took off last week. But hey, let's look at it once again, because as we get closer and closer throughout the offseason, we are getting closer and closer to the NFL Draft. Of course, that's always at the end of April. And as at the recording time of this podcast, it's 4.11 of April 3rd. So we only got a couple more weeks to go. Getting so much closer. Looking at it, I did make a couple of changes for my 3.0. Of course, I did have the Vikings trading up to the three pick while the Patriots get the 11th and 23rd. I made a little bit of a change there. This time, the Patriots are staying at three, and I have Minnesota trading up to the top five still, but with the Los Angeles Chargers to still get the quarterback that they are looking for. I know that J.J. McCarthy there was rumors that maybe he goes number two overall, but I'd have to see more of that before I believe it because right now it is a lying season. So I am very skeptical of that right now, but I still think there's been plenty of talk of J.J. McCarthy going pretty high in the draft. And if Minnesota is to trade up, I think if we still see Caleb Williams go number one overall to the Chicago Bears like we expect, Jaden Daniel goes number two to the Washington Commanders, and then Drake May goes to the Patriots at three, with all the hype that is going around J.J. McCarthy, if the Minnesota Vikings are all for it, why not trade up to number five to go get him? Of course, we have Malik Neighbors at the New York Giants at number six. Dallas Turner goes to Atlanta at number eight. While for the New York Jets, even though they had signed Mike Williams to a one-year deal, I still think if you can get a top three wide receiver in this class, if you are not to trade down, of course, because there is rumors that they are very willing to trade down if there is a quarterback needy team that is really looking for a quarterback, go for it. But if they are to stay at this pick, I think they end up going wide receiver. Give Aaron Rodgers another weapon to throw to, especially since they've shored up that offensive line quite a bit. Then I have Bo Nix jumping into the first round. I have him going 12th overall to the Denver Broncos. While for the New Orleans Saints, I still have them taking an offensive tackle. This time going with Talise Fuaga out of Oregon State. Now, of course, if you're thinking about it and what we talked about with the Stephon Dix trade, if you're, say, the Indianapolis Colts, do you go with a wide receiver to try and give more offensive firepower to Anthony Richardson? I think it's a fair point. That gives an opportunity for Brian Thomas Jr. to go to Indy. But I think you, if you're Indianapolis and you're the Colts, why not try to counteract that by getting one of the best cornerback prospects to try and cover those receivers for Houston a little bit better? And that, that, if that's the case, I went with Quinion Mitchell out of Toledo. I think that's a big one that you should be looking out for. Well, there's a couple other guys. Brian Thomas Jr. out of LSU. I have him going 18 to the Cincinnati Bengals. Of course, that all just depends on what Buffalo does. Do they end up trading for T. Higgins? Does T. Higgins go to another team? 
Who knows? Only one way to find out. We did make a couple of other changes. I have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers end up going with Cooper DeJean out of Iowa, the cornerback there, while Amarius Mims. I had him early on in the draft going midway into it with the Las Vegas Raiders. But as of right now, I have Mims out of Georgia going to the Green Bay Packers to replace David Bakhtiari, while the last couple of picks in the first round, the Bills, I have them taking J.C. Latham out of Alabama, sure up that offensive line a little bit more, Chop Robinson going to Detroit, and then Jordan Morgan out of Arizona, helping sure up that offensive line for the 49ers for the future, and then Kansas City with the 32nd overall pick, going with Tyler Newbin out of Minnesota, sure up that safety position a little bit more. Appreciate you listening to another edition of Cleats and Sneaks. Talk to you next time.